I want to talk a little bit this morning about some of the management considerations when you're working with a flood type system such as gated pipe here. Uh, as you can see, when we're operating on the gated pipe system, we have an adjustable gate that we can use to control the flow of water that we're putting out into an individual furrow. Uh, one management practice that we often use is that we start with the gates open fairly wide and then as the irrigation proceeds and gets down to the end of the row, we will then push back on that gate and reduce the amount of water we're putting into the furrow to try to keep more of it on the field and reduce the runoff. Anytime we're operating a gated pipe system or a flood system, as soon as the water hits the field, our opportunity time at that point in the field begins. And as the wetted front advances down the furrow, we're bringing more area into that available time to receive irrigation water. However, the clock doesn't stop at the top end of the field. So by using a cutback type irrigation that allows us to get better distribution across the length of the furrow while attempting to minimize the amount of runoff we're going to have. A certain amount of runoff is always the cost of doing business in a furrow system except in the situation where you're using a level furrow with an end dike in it. Uh, there's several technologies that are available to improve the irrigation uniformity such as surge irrigation. We will actually set up two sets of pipe and then we will force all the water to one side or the other to push the water out across the field and then give it some soak time to increase that distribution uniformity. One of the things we have to be careful with is we want to make sure that we are getting enough water at the bottom end of the field without pushing too much out the bottom up here at the head end of the field. Uh, another concern we have when, when operating a gated pipe system such as this is erosion potential. In a field such as this alfalfa field here where we've got good standing cover in the field, erosion is generally not too much of a problem as long as we're not over applying the water to the field. However, if you move into a row crop such as corn, dry beans, uh, those types of situations where you've, you have the furrows and they're clean tilled furrows, uh, erosion can become a real problem. This water has a lot of force on it coming out. Uh, sometimes these pipe systems are run as high as 10 PSI as far as the pressure inside the main pipeline. So when we open the gate up all the way, we're putting out a pretty good head of water onto the field and it has a tendency to dig a hole down here. And if you look, you can see my hand here goes down a certain amount, but here there's actually a hole down here that the water has chewed, that the water coming out has chewed into the top of that field. There's several methods we can use to do that. One is to try to keep the flow at the minimum amount we need to get through and complete our irrigation in a reasonable amount of time. They also make products such as erosion socks which will clip over the pipe and lay out to help diffuse some of that water coming out of the pipe, take up that energy and give us a more laminar flow and cut down on the turbulence that's causing this, this down cutting here at this point. Uh, another thing you can do, and uh, this works pretty well, is um, if you have some old moldy hay, depending on the system, sometimes you can put a flake at each, in each furrow where the, where the stream of water is going to be coming out and that will help absorb some of that energy. We're operating a gated pipe system. While it's nice and convenient to have the gates up here where we can see them, ideally we like to put the gates down at about the 4 o'clock position to also help minimize that, ener that energy. A lot of producers will have a tendency to clock the gates up and they'll set them up here in maybe the 1 o'clock position, which allows them to see their water, which sometimes they use as a management tool. However, when we're firing that out in the air like that, we have that additional energy at the impact point and it can cause erosion problems within the field. Uh, when we're irrigating with a gated pipe system, one thing we want to keep in mind is, is that uh, in, a, in a system such as this where you have corrugations, the water is going to try to spread, but when we are operating with furrows, the water has to have time to sub across the bar, as it's called. We need to get all the way across to the center of the furrow. Uh, in an alternate furrow irrigation system, we might want to sub all the way across the top of that bar and go to the far side of the furrow. This has a couple advantages for us. Um, by irrigating that way, we're putting on the maximum amount of water that we can in a single irrigation event, which reduces labor. Also, when salinity is a concern, it has the, it has the tendency it moves the salts outside of the, the immediate rooting zone of the, cro of the crop and it will deposit them on the far side of that row or over in the dry row, which helps us control and manage our salts more effectively. If you're using every row for uh, irrigation, you want to plant your crops on the edge of the bed 
to make sure that the salts are moving to the center and keeping them outside that root zone, particularly during germination. A lot of our crops that are very salt tolerant uh, in the later growth stages, but most of them are fairly sensitive during the germination and early development stages uh, of their life cycle. So we want to make sure that we're, we're taking efforts to control that salt. That also goes into the deep percolation that I mentioned before. When we are irrigating, we want to make sure that we are getting enough water moving through the soil profile to push the salts down. But once we get it beyond the root zone, what tends to happen is those salts go out the bottom of the field as deep percolation, and they end up down in the stream or the drainage. So part of what we do with irrigation water management is we're trying to control the depths that we're putting that salt. When you look at a root zone for a typical crop, you can divide it into quarters. So you'd have the top quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, and the bottom quarter. 70% of what the, the plant available water is going to come out of that top half of that root profile with 40% in the top quarter, 30% in the second quarter. So having a higher concentration of salts low in the root zone is not really going to have any detrimental impacts upon your crop growth. And that's kind of the goal of what we're trying to do with management with regard to salt is control those salts in the lower part of the profile. As far as managing the, the moisture in the soil profile itself, any water you put on beyond the bottom of the, the maximum root zone of that crop is effectively lost. So we want to control the timing so that we irrigate to make sure the crop has what it needs. We don't want to over irrigate the crop. Salts will move to the edge of the wetted front. If you keep a field wet all the time, it tends to bring the salts up to the top. We want to dry that down in between irrigations to an acceptable management allowable depletion. What that's going to be is going to depend on your crop and your soil type and what your management goals are for that particular field. For corn or alfalfa, perhaps we may allow 50% of the available water in the field to be depleted before we do an irrigation and refill that soil profile. On a more sensitive crop, such as potatoes, if we dried it down to 50%, it's going to cause the tubers to split and reduce the value of the crop. So we would select a higher mat. Say we would use 35% of the water available in the field, then irrigate to refill. Uh, when you're managing water, one thing you always want to try to do is schedule your leaching events at times when you have low nutrient levels in the field, so you wouldn't want to try to leach immediately after applying nitrogen. Uh, the nitrogen is just going to leach out uh, down to the lower part of the root zone where it's ineffective, and uh, that will also prove to be somewhat uh, expensive in the long run because you'll have to keep applying nitrogen. Another thing we like to try to do is anticipate how much snow and precipitation we're going to get over the winter months using snow surveys, other data that's available from NRCS and NOAA, and based on that we want to irrigate at the end of the season to try to refill the soil profile to the point where we're not starting out dry in the spring. We want the surface dry enough that we can get out there, take, conduct necessary field operations, but lower in the profile we want to have that, you almost think of it as a bank, and we want to have that bank filled up so that the water is there and available so we don't get behind in the season. Once you get behind in, in an irrigation uh, system, it can be very difficult to get caught back up. So that's uh, something we always try to keep in mind.